Hello everyone, my name is Samantha Tan and today I'll be presenting my Built Basics marketing campaign titled Simply Built. So this is kind of the agenda for today. Um, we will break the presentation into eight different parts. So we'll kick off with like the goal and we'll talk about the market, the analysis, the audience, the narrative, the metrics, the plans, and then the influencers. So starting off with part one, the goal. So what are we here to achieve? Um, the goal for this plan is to make Built Basics the go-to premium basics apparel brand in North America. So as part of this goal, the plan is to launch a marketing campaign that raises brand awareness, builds audience engagement, and emphasizes the message that Built Basics is here to empower everyone with one piece of clothing at a time, no matter the occasion. So let's dive into the market analysis. So kicking off, uh, we want to start off with some industry trends of 2022. So in 2022, we'll see the rise of digital channels. Um, digital channels are expected to become a permanent shift because of the pandemic. And as a result, brands must be able to increase their online presence and be able to offer more personalized solutions. There is also going to be a growth of the leisure trend. So Athleisure is really booming around um, consumers as they really turn in their business casual clothing to more uh, active wear and like yoga wear. And this global market is expected to grow um, by 153.02 billion dollars um, during 2021 through to 2025. Um, sustainability and social justice is also going to be a really big trend within the retail and apparel industry. Uh, consumers are more and more becoming concerned about the future of the planet and there will be a lot more pressure put on fashion brands that do not um, offer eco-friendly practices and this will just continue to increase as this goes on. Uh, another trend that will be really big in 2022 is having more size inclusivity. So historically plus size clothing has been a bit scarce at many retailers. Um, and as size inclusive initiatives becomes, you know, more popular and it gains more momentum, more brands are expanding their size ranges. So this is something that we'll see in a lot more of these big apparel brands going forward. So for the analysis, what are some of the strengths for Built by Basics? So to start off, Built Basics has affordable and high quality clothing, and it has a really wide range of men's apparel clothing. It also has a strong roster of brand ambassadors and a strong following on Instagram and Facebook. And um, Built Basics does do a great job with uh, leveraging user generated content via the Built for This tag. Um, in terms of the website, it is simple and easy to use. And the website, Instagram and Facebook all rank first on Google search. Um, so the page just has pretty good uh, SEO so far. In terms of weaknesses, um, while Built Basics does have a really wide range of apparel for men, the selection for women's and kids' apparels are still fairly small. And um, in general, the apparels have pretty high shipping costs. Um, in terms of like social media, um, Built Basics does have a Twitter profile, although the presence is quite poor and it has um, an, an active profile page. Um, in terms of social content, right now, a lot of the content is very heavily product focused. So it does lack a bit of some clear brand identity and messaging. So um, this can impact the brand in terms of how consumers perceive who you are and what you stand for. In terms of some opportunities for Built Basics, I think um, as part of that 2022 trend, being more size inclusive will be a big way to boost um, Built Basics's uh, favorability in terms of uh, uh, for consumers and, you know, being able to showcase its commitment to sustainable and eco-friendly practices will be a big opportunity for Built Basics, especially because Built Basics, um, they don't do, you know, what these big fashion retailers do. Uh, they work directly with um, manufacturers. So, you know, there's a big opportunity for their, uh, for Built Basics to really showcase how um, you know, your clothing is made and how you can be more sustainable and eco-friendly moving forward. Uh, other than that, you can also highlight and leverage your brand ambassadors more on social media. I think with that strong roster, it's a great opportunity to really push um, your brand messaging through your brand ambassadors. And I think expanding the ambassador program to include more women and non-binary individuals will make the brand seem more um, inclusive and all-encompassing and attract a wider range of audiences. 
Other than that, I think it's a great opportunity to diversify the content to showcase the more human side of the brand. And we'll be able to do that by communicating a clear brand messaging and narrative. In terms of threats, um, Built Basics is not the only brand name with the word built in it. Um, and this is quite a highly competitive market as all retail markets go. Um, and so far, uh, Built Basics, it does have a little bit of poor customer service and audience engagement online. Um, and that comes with negative reviews. So there have been a lot of like audiences um, who uh, tweet or mention or even comment on Built Basics' posts, whether it's on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, but for the most part, they often go unanswered. And, um, you know, so far, um, Built Basics does rank really poorly when it comes to its customer service. So it's a, and this can really impact, you know, how customers perceive your brand and whether or not they would want to proceed with, you know, buying from you. So this is something that we'll definitely need to be able to work on. And other than that, um, I think uh, Built Basics, while it does have a strong footprint in North American markets, it is virtually um, poorly known in non-American, North American regions. So, um, you know, as we, build out this plan, I think when we gain more market footprint in North America, um, there's definitely a big opportunity to, you know, expand build basis's footprint in other regions of the globe. In terms of competitors, um, we think that these are the main competitors for built basics. Um, it includes uh, basics, uh, cuts, Uniqlo, Matewell, basic outfitters, and Everlane. So all these companies, they either have their um, simple curated basics, uh, elevated basics line, or for example, companies like Madewell and Everlane, um, they do, while they do have a much wider range of clothing apparel, they do have dedicated basic clothing as well, and it is pretty popular among uh, consumers. So in terms of the audience, uh, the first audience that we identify for Built Basics and this campaign is pro athletes. So in general, the median income for pro athletes is around $35,000 a year. And they typically um, uh, range between 26 to 32 years old. In terms of their habits, they typically spend around five to six hours a day and six days a week training. Uh, for pro athletes, in terms of clothing, they generally prefer items that are comfortable and can suit their active lifestyle while also being fashionable and can easily be dressed up or down. In terms of their values, uh, quality apparel is a big thing for pro athletes because they don't want their items to be able to wear and tear easily. So something that can be resilient with them. In terms of favorite retailers, pro athletes generally go for uh, sports brands such as Nike, Adidas, Puma, and Under Armour. Another um, target audience that we have are the modern workers. So they have a median income of around a little bit over $71,000 a year. Um, they typically range in age from 25 to 37. So they are kind of in the millennial kind of group. Um, they typically work nine to five hours uh, a day in an office environment and they have a really on the go lifestyle uh, and they prefer business class uh, clothing and at leisure. Um, in general, this generation, they do very much value health and wellness, um, convenience, socially environment conscious products, and their favorite retailers are Walmart, Amazon, Kohl's, Target, and Nike. Uh, and the last group that we identified for this campaign is the up and coming individuals. So these individuals um, are mostly like college students or maybe like fresh graduates. So they're around 18 to 24 years old. So most of them are probably in Gen Z. Um, and while majority of these uh, uh, people in this age group, they're not necessarily working individuals just yet, um, their expected median income will be 47,000 a year. So typically spend 15 to 20 hours a week in the classroom and some of them may have part-time jobs. Um, some, as I mentioned, are probably in the early stages of, of their career. So they're like fresh graduates and they also have an on-the-go lifestyle. So because some of these are like up and coming individuals, they may be really trying to determine their style and sense of fashion. So it'll be a great opportunity, um, you know, for them to learn how to uh, create their own style through Elevated Basics. Um, so far for this uh, target demographic, they prefer athleisure and casual wear, and they value inclusivity and pragmatism, um, cost efficiency, health and wellness, um, socially and environmentally conscious products. And this generation is typically more fiscally conscious as well. So, you know, being able to offer affordable clothing will be a big uh, selling point for this target demographic. 
in terms of favorite retailers, they like Walmart, Nike, Ross, American Eagle, H&M, and Amazon. So the brand narrative. Um, the narrative is gonna be really important for this campaign because it's gonna be um, the hook to really sell who Built Basics is as a brand and what you stand for. So this is the brand narrative that we came up for this campaign. Humankind's history is one of resilience. And this past year is no exception. And in fact, we have never been more resilient. As modern individuals, we have grit. We are go-getters, risk takers, dreamers, and fighters. We are built to rise when we fall. We are built to climb mountains and sail oceans. We are built to innovate and find beauty in the finer things in life when we are built for this. But built, being resilient is no easy feat. And at an age where the modern uh, world has become so complex and filled with noise, um, it is easy to feel like we're losing control of our daily lives. Building resilience starts with self-care and creating a strong foundation within ourselves. It starts with getting up and facing each new day with a fresh and positive perspective, no matter how daunting the task. So your day starts with the first thing you put on and it has the power to affect your confidence, your personality and your perception. At Built Big Six, we believe that simplicity helps you start the day right and give you the energy to feel your resilience. Simplicity in your apparel puts the power in your hands. It allows you, the individual, to be the highlight to let you speak for who you are as a person. With our simple yet versatile high quality basics, our apparel stays resilient with you so you can have more time to enjoy what really matters in life, no matter the occasion. Start simple with Built Basics because you are built for this. Hashtag simply built. So these are the key messages that we wanna come with uh, to support this brand narrative. Uh, the first is simply resilient. So Built Basics skips the high cost retailers to invest in high quality without the price tag. Built works directly with manufacturing partners to create completely unique fabrics that are long lasting and remains resilient with you. Simply versatile. Going back to basics doesn't have to be boring. Our tailored fit and elevated designs are made to follow your on the go lifestyle. Whether it's the office, going out with friends or hitting the gym, our apparel keeps it simple yet versatile to match any occasion. Simply you. Our community is our why, an outward expression of what it means to be built. We want to highlight the resilience of our community and encourage them to continue building resilience because they are built for this. So um, going into some of the things that we'll use to track our metrics. Uh, so for our goals and KPIs, as I mentioned, the overarching goal is to make Built Basics the go-to premium uh, basics apparel brand in North America. So we kind of split this plan into three parts. The first one is awareness. So the goal is to increase overall brand recognition by target audience and KPIs include um, increasing CTR by 20%, increased searches by 20%, and increased reach and impressions by 50%. Uh, the next part of the plan will be um, adoption. So this goal will focus on increasing the overall market share by 5%. KPIs including uh, increased conversion rates by 20%, revenue by 15%, and expanding Built Basics' customer base by 10%. And then we have advocacy. So the goal is to strengthen existing customer relationships and build new ones. So the KPIs will lead to increased audience engagement by 50%, follows by 20%, and positive sentiment and reviews by 10%. So the total budget for uh, this campaign is $800,000. So it'll be split into three parts. Uh, the first one is for the paid media plan, which includes like your ads and all of that for a total of $500,000. And then we will allocate uh, $75,000 for creative resources. So um, assets, you know, production sources and all that. And $225,000 for the influence program. In terms of this timeline, uh, this campaign will be running uh, for six months from January, 2022 to June, 2022. And this is kind of how we will break out um, the campaign. So we'll kick off from January to March uh, to May 2022 to develop the creatives and copy. We also at the same period to post content weekly focused on uh, the awareness component, which we'll dive deeper uh, later on. Um, and for adoption to conduct regular social monitoring and engaging with your audience uh, from January all the way through June. For advocacy uh, from February to June, uh, we're going to promote um, user-generated content, employee advocacy, and launch the influencer program. At the same time, we're also going to run the paid media plan, um, and then we broke it out from a couple, two different evaluations for each quarter. So the plan. 
Um, we start off with owned media. So we really want to push um, Built Basics' own blog and YouTube. So as part of this, we want to continue focusing on human interest stories that showcase the built community. Um, this is also part of this to continue developing the how it's built videos that can be leveraged or repurposed as blog content and social content. We also want to improve um, on-page optimization and SEO. Uh, for SEO is search engine optimization. Uh, it's the practice of increasing the quantity and quality of traffic to your website through organic search results. So for on-page optimization, it's using like um, optimizing your content and the HTML source code of your page. And then also for off-page optimization to boost SEO through inbound linking. As for social media, these are the current profiles that we have for Built Basics. As you notice, um, for Twitter, even though you do have a profile, it is relatively inactive with zero followers and zero posts. Um, but as I mentioned, we break it down into three parts. So for awareness, we want to kick off with um, the awareness part of social media campaign, which is to you know include a consistent posting schedule, leverage the built for this and simply built taglines and to diversify your content more to include a mix of product focus and the community focused stories. And then we'll move on to adoption, which is to generate engagement with the audiences. Um, and here we wanna drive target audience to brand offers and prioritize customer service. And then for advocacy, uh, we want to leverage user generated content, launch the influencer program, uh, encourage audiences to showcase how they remain real resilient and are built for this and uh, leverage employee advocacy. So for Instagram, um, we recommend posting one organic post each day. So here are some samples of how a product focus and a people focused um, post can look like. So I'll give you uh, some time to uh, give this a look, but in general, you know, um, we want to give with like, you know, punchy uh, uh, captions and, you know, keep the uh, uh, imagery itself, you know, pretty nice and uh, fresh and clean just to fit with uh, Built Basics' current aesthetic. Um, for Facebook, we also recommend posting one organic post each day. Um, it's also going to be product focused and people focused. Um, and for Facebook, we can be a little bit more fun and relaxed as well uh, in terms of the copy. Uh, for TikTok, um, we want to really recommend, you know, uh, posting one to two organic posts each day. And then for here, it's more or less so like the human or you know, the product focused stories, but we really want to showcase your personality. So, you know, don't hesitate to jump in on trends and like participate in them. For example, um, Emily Zuge, she went uh, uh, viral when she, you know, redesigned a lot of brands as logos. And there were a lot of different brands who chimed in on the comment section and it gives these brands a lot of exposure. And, and same as you probably know, Duolingo is really killing the TikTok scene right now. And you know, the thing about Duolingo is they're not afraid to really showcase their uh, crazy personality and, you know, um, who they are and just like jump in on trends and instead of like just really pushing the product. So I think this is a great way to really showcase uh, Built Basics personality and connect with your audiences more. And then for Twitter, uh, we recommend one to two tweets daily. Um, for Twitter, we really want to make it more people focused and, um, you know, think of your Twitter feed as a way to really showcase your brand narrative over time. So um, we really want to share current and past blogs, highlight that, uh, how it's been, uh, how it's made video series and, you know, just really uh, repurposing the content for all of these platforms um, for each other. And then to move on to paid media, this is kind of how we're going to break down the paid media plan. So we want to target um, Google with display and search, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So this is the budget breakdown. And for the like, key placements for Google, it's going to be search results and display network ads. Instagram is going to be in-feed ads, IG stories, and explore ads. For Facebook, uh, it will be in-feed ads and Facebook stories. And for Twitter, it's going to be Twitter takeover ads, promoted ads, and follower ads. Um, these are our recommended uh, targeting uh, and for ad segmentation, it will be around like for industry, demographic, behavior. For target audience, Google, we're going to aim to target all three audiences. Um, same goes for Instagram. Um, for Facebook, we're just primarily going to target the modern workers since usually this platform is more used by the millennial generation. And for Twitter, we're going to heavily target on athletes and workers. In terms of KPIs, uh, we can track by a, a cost per model, click-through rate, cost per click, um, cost per lead, quality score, as well as cost per view. 
So this is kind of how we envision the Google ads to look like. Uh, there will be like search results ads um, and display network ads. Sorry, this is a little uh, reverse, but uh, this is supposed to be the display network ad where basically uh, they are shown on the articles, videos, or websites that consumers browse. And then for search result ads, they will just pop up in uh, your Google search. And then for Instagram ads, uh, there'll be like standard images, gallery stories, and videos. So we have regular in-feed ads, story ads, and explore ads. For Facebook, for the most part, it'll look pretty similar to Instagram. We'll also have standard images, galleries, stories, and videos. And for this one, we'll do in-feed ads and story ads. And then for Twitter ads, um, it'll be uh, standard images, gallery, and videos. Um, and then we have Twitter takeover ads. So these are Twitter takeover is kind of um, the most premium and mass reach placements that drive uh, results across the funnel. So you can do like a timeline takeover where it puts the brand at the top of the conversation for the day. Uh, so it's kind of, um, you know, when people go to their timeline to discover what's happening is the first thing they'll see. And then there's also like a trend takeover um, ad. So when they go and click into certain trends, um, the ad will be the first thing that they see there. And then we have follower ads where um, the ads will push, be pushed to followers and promoted ads where it can be promoted um, widely across the channel. So um, the next and last part of our plan is the influencers. So influencers will play a really big part for this plan. And the purpose of influencer marketing is to really leverage an individual's uh, influence and power to promote a brand. So in this case, Bill Basics. So, um, it's really powerful because when an influence, uh, influential person endorses a brand, their fans are most likely to take note and put some trust into it. So um, how will we leverage these influencers? So we have five different categories. So the first one is product reviews. So it's pretty standard. We will send some products over to the in influencer and then have them review it on their channel. Um, and then we will also have affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing is a system that relies on partners in promoting brands um, and products, and it will promote a product sale on site, or it can also be uh, just redirected to Built Basics' website. Uh, we can also host giveaways. Uh, giveaways are generally really popular on social media and a great way to reach a wide range of audiences. Um, we have sponsored content, so just regular, you know, sponsored content over uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and perhaps TikTok. And then the last one is a social media take takeover. So um, this, this tactic is basically to increase brand exposure and offer uh, interesting content to the audience. So what we'll do is we'll have the one influencer really take over all of the basics' Um, social media channels for a given period of time and then you know give them kind of the creative freedom um, to uh, you know navigate uh, our brand promotion on social media. So in terms of the current influencer landscape this is kind of the tiers for influencers so Nano has 1 to 10k followers, Micro 10 to 50k followers, Mid-tier 50k to 500k followers, Macro 500k to 1 million and Elite or over 1 million plus followers. So right now, um, Built Basics has, uh, for the most part, elite macro and meat tier follow, uh, influencers. So some of them include uh, for elite Brandon Shop, who is a MMA fighter turned podcast slash comedian slash entrepreneur. Um, we also have uh, some, some people like Louis Swansea, who is a singer songwriter. On the macro scale, we have Cade and Ty Rotolo, who are twin brothers and jujitsu pros. We also have Jason Waller, who is an actor. On the mid-tier scale, we have Shane Bieber, who is the pitcher for the Cleveland Guardians, um, and also people like Chris Pierre, who is a pro skateboarder. So in terms of new influencers that we want to target, um, you know, we want to continue on with, you know, identifying new influencers on the elite macro and mid-tier scale, but we think it's also a great opportunity to move into more micro scales uh, because, you know, they have a more highly niche audience and sometimes um, it can build an even stronger sense of trust with their audiences. So we uh, definitely want to move into a micro tier as well. So some examples on the elite scale is Alex Costa. So he is the 2021 fashion, uh, fashion influencer of the year. He has 1.6 million Instagram followers and 1.1 million TikTok followers. So he frequently posts about ways to style clothing and has an elevated basic aesthetic. Um, he's also really open to brand partnerships and um, he uh, recently starting his own venture into, you know, his own um, apparel company. So, you know, it will be a great opportunity for brand partnerships and collaborations as well. 
on the macro and mid-tier scale, we have Cody Weston Andrew. Uh, he has 296K uh, followers on Instagram, uh, but he has 763 TikTok followers. So we kind of put him in the macro mid-tier scale. Um, so he's more of a lifestyle influencer, but he does frequently post a lot about his day-to-day -day lifestyle, um, fitness and outfits of the day. So it does target a broad range of um, our uh, audiences, including like the modern workers and the athletes. Um, and his fashion videos often include a mix of styles, including formal, business, casual, casual, and athleisure. So we think it's a great way to really showcase the versatility of built basis as um, clothing and apparel uh, through, you know, the way that he styles his clothing. And then on the micro scale, we have Courtney Bigelow. Uh, she owns the uh, uh, the title, The Great Edit. So she has 15.6K followers on Instagram and 46.3 TikTok followers. She is a lifestyle and fashion influencer and she's actually specifically known for curating um, elevated basics kind of content. Um, and she also talks about motherhood experiences and photography. So she is right uh, down in, uh, right up in Built Basis Alley and would be really perfect uh, uh, as an influencer for this brand. Uh, but that pretty much brings up uh, sums up the uh, presentation and uh, you know this is just some of the credits for the images used in this plan um, but you know to sum up we think there is a really great opportunity for built basics to really push um, your brand messaging through this marketing plan um, so uh, really appreciate your time listen and consider my plan and thank you if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me